Hey, what's going on YouTube? Alabama Reloader here with my girlfriend Emily off in the corner. Um, hopefully she can help me get behind the camera just to double check and make sure I don't have another incident where it chops off part of my head. We good? You good. Good there? Okay. Um, so it's been a minute since I did a video. Uh, today I'm not feeling up to speed because yesterday I woke up feeling as bad as Nancy Pelosi looks, so there you go. Yeah, exactly. Um, I actually used that line when I went to the doctor. They asked me what was wrong. Hey, can you get the grab the cat? That cat's trying to do that. Uh, keeps hitting the tripod. But um, yeah, I woke up not feeling too great. Went to the doctor. Um, went to a little urgent care doc in the box place and tested positive for the flu and strep throat both. Um, so I've been feeling pretty bad. But just got back from vacation, so can't complain too much. Um, but today, um, not on this video, but I'm basically going to be reloading and redoing the test um, for the Nosler, the 105 grain uh, boat tail hollow point. I'm going to redo that test where we, where I tested the overall length of 2.8 inches. Um, for three five-shot groups, and then I'll do three five-shot groups going cartridge base to ogive, and we're gonna we're gonna determine the results and compare them to our last target that we had. I know it's been a few weeks now, but we're still on track with that. Um, I just wanna I wanna do that one more test. I wanna do that test again just to just to verify everything. Uh, but it kind of ties into I had a had somebody comment on a video. Um, guy by the name of Jeff down in Montgomery and he uh, <laughs> Emily's over here wrestling the cat so um, she keeps trying to mess with the tripod but a guy by the name of Jeff down in Montgomery uh, shout out to him he hit me up about purchasing a couple of the, the duplicate items that I had based on this last uh, really good find uh, when I bought a whole that whole basically lot of stuff uh, reload the stuff so I just shipped that off to him. He, he bought the, the Lyman Case Prep Express and the, uh, the Lyman Universal Trimmer. So I believe it showed up to him yesterday. Hopefully he gets good use out of that. Um, but he also, me and him were texting back and forth. And he was wondering if I could just maybe do a, a quick video on Ojive. What, what the heck is it? Why is it important? You know, why, why should we worry about cartridge based to Ojive? Blah, 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 all that. It's kind of a, it's one of, the, it's not really a mythical or, or mysterious thing. It's just, it is what it is, but can, can we expand on it a little bit? And that's where this paper comes in. Um, this is from Applied Ballistics, and it's just a two-page document. It's kind of like a two-page white paper that was released in, looks like 2015, by Brian Litz. Is the is the guy that that wrote the paper? Um, if you don't know who he is, he is the chief ballistician. I guess I'm saying that correctly. Um, over at Burger Bullets, so the guy knows a thing or two about bullet design and um, and optimal bullet design. I guess you'll say. And so pretty much he breaks down. Uh, traditionally, there have been two ogive shapes. Now, when we talk about ogive, a lot of people. A lot of people will refer, and I know you're probably not going to see this too well, but a lot of people will refer to ogive as the part of the bullet that first makes contact with the lands of the rifle. All right? And technically, that's not necessarily true. Ogive, ogive is actually the entire conical shape of the top of the bullet. Okay, So starting at the tip, the ogive actually is from the tip of the bullet down to the bearing surface where that bullet first makes contact with the lens. Okay, that is, she's fine. As long as she's not hitting the tripod, she's good. Um, the cat got away. So, so that's really, when you talk about ogive, that, that's the portion of the bullet that you're talking about. You're talking about that top section of bullet that from the bearing surface that first meets the lens of the rifle all the way to the tip. That is considered technically the ogive, okay? Um, most people just refer to the ogive as the part that, that first contacts the lands because that's what you're measuring to. You're measuring to that point. A lot of people just refer to that. But just 
FYI for those of you that are out there that, that kind of care about that stuff. So traditionally there have been two different types of ojibs. Um, there's been a tangent and a secant ojib. Now he breaks it down on this white paper and he explains how to measure it and all. I mean he goes into some really funky stuff. Um, how to measure the curve and all that. It's yeah, more, more in depth than you'll ever want to know or care about. Uh, but just suffice it to say that a tangent ojive is more of your traditional, like this spear, boat tail saw point, like a Sierra Game King, uh, Sierra Pro Hunter. Those are your traditional bullet designs, more of the short, fat, we'll call them short, fat uh, bullet designs. Those are tangent ojives, okay? So that way you can kind of get in your mind what the heck a tangent ojive is. And then, even though this is not a true secant ojive, this is somewhat close, it's more of a hybrid, but this is the Nosler. Uh, so it's that long, sleek, uh, Burger makes the VLD, the very low drag, I believe is what it's called. That is a true secant ojive design bullet. Okay, so if you have some Burger VLD bullets, then you can just pull those out, look at them, now you'll know what the heck I'm talking about between tangent and secant ojive. All right. So basically the first part of this is just how to measure it. Um, and then it gives some, some strengths and weaknesses of the tangent and secant ojive. Now strength of the tangent, we'll go through all of these here uh, because he also explains the hybrid ojive. Um, tangent ojive, the strength is uh, smooth juncture with the bearing surface. It's good for self-aligning the bullet into the rifling, thereby making the bullet less sensitive to seeding depth. Okay, so it's, it's, it's jump tolerant, basically, is what he's saying. Um, if you go with a bullet design like this, like the Sierra Game King, Pro Hunter, uh, the Spear, Boatail Soft Point, um, any of the bullet designs that have the, the tangent ojive, they're going to be more jump tolerant than the secant ojive. All right, now the weakness of the tangent ojive has more drag, so it's got a lower ballistic coefficient than a secant ojive VLD bullet of the same length. Okay, so you're, you're going to be giving up a little bit in uh, ballistic coefficient, ability to buck the wind, all that. Uh, you'll be giving up some of that ability when you're going with that type of bullet, but it will be more jump tolerant. Okay, so you can you can you can jump further to the lands, <clears throat> or that seating depth isn't really critical like it is on a secant ojive type bullet. Okay. So now, the strengths and weaknesses of the secant ojive, lower drag, so higher BC, VLD, very low drag, right? that's what it's called, the burger VLD bullets. Um, lower drag, higher ballistic coefficient, and a tangent ojive of the same length. Okay, so same thing, right, the opposite. Right? It's the strength of the secant was the weakness of the tangent. Right? So now the weakness is, again, right, the opposite of the tangent, the abrupt juncture between the bearing surface and the ojive is not good for self-aligning the bullet in the rifling, so this shape is quite sensitive to seating depth. Now that's the part where if, you, if you've ever purchased VLD bullets, which I have in the past and I've shot really good groups with them, uh, Berger recommends you start, uh, I believe they recommend you start with the bullet in the lands. So you actually start touching the lands, uh, I believe they even in their manual, I think they recommend you actually be jammed into the lands five or ten thousandths, maybe something to that effect. I can't remember exactly, it's something like that. And then back off in ten thousandth, ten thousandth uh, increments, I believe, five or ten thousandth increments, for that very reason. It, when you're shooting a VLD bullet, it's very jump sensitive. Okay, that bullet jump has to be dialed in and it has to be consistent round after round, otherwise you're gonna see your groups open up, you're gonna have a lot of issues with consistency from shot to shot. So, um, Now, the other part down here on, the, on this paper, on this two-page paper, it talks about the best of both worlds, right? Which is uh, the hybrid design, which when you go and you look at a lot of burger bullets, I mean, they even say VLD or hybrid target. And so if you're wondering what those words mean, this is what they mean. They basically combine the tangent and secant ojive into a hybrid design, um, which is su supposed to give you kind of the best of both worlds, right? So it gives you a little bit more forgiveness on the on the uh, on the jump, on jump to the land. So it's a little more tolerant to that jump distance, and then it also gives you higher BCs, right? So it overcomes the weakness of the tangent ojive, and it also kind of overcomes 
excuse me, overcomes the weakness of the secant ogive. So, cat, cat's trying to mess with my tripod. Um, so I'll read you a little blurb here. So, the the hybrid ogive combines the strengths of both the tangent and secant ogives without suffering either of the weaknesses. The hybrid ogive is is tangent to the bearing surface where it contacts the rifling. This aids the bullet in self-aligning with the bore and making it less sensitive to seating depth. Four to the point where the rifling in, rifling in, what, engage the bullet, the ogive transitions into a longer radius, lower drag, ogive, which is good for drag reduction. All right, so I'll see if I can get this on, on camera here. Let's see if we can... There we go. So that's kind of what I've been uh, reviewing there. It's, it's just that in a nutshell. You've got you've got the tangent ogive, the secant ogive, and then the hybrid at the bottom. All right. And so again, that's what whenever you're um, whenever you're out, you know, shopping for bullets or you're trying to determine what you want to do. Again, it goes back to you have to figure out. What are you trying to accomplish when you reload? Um, you know, what are, what are your end goals in mind? Is it just a hunting round? Are you trying to punch paper at a long distance? Um, that's gonna that's gonna determine sort of what bullet design you go with. Because trust me, you don't want to you don't want to just go buy burger bullets all day long. Those things are not cheap. So. Um, that's why I kind of got away from them. performance is, is outstanding or at least what I've seen out of out of my rifle performance can be outstanding but at the same time it's very expensive so if you like to shoot a lot well that that can get pretty pricey when you're dropping you know 45 50 bucks per box um, as opposed to you know something like a boat tail soft point where you're paying less than half for the same quantity of bullets so you can shoot a lot more um, so you really have to determine what are you trying to accomplish if you're you know maximum accuracy and, and precision then the vld might might well be the the route to go but doing that you're going to have to really dial in that cartridge base to ogive measurement and to do that you're going to need a bullet comparator all right to put on your to put on your calipers and then from there, once you have measured, uh, once you have measured the distance to the lands using this little bad boy, uh, the Hornady overall length gauge. Once you've done that, then you come back and you just throw your bullet on there. Uh, let's see. I think the last measurement I took was the yeah, it was the 105. Um, once you do that. Then you're, you're simply going to take your your measurement, and it's it's not a perfect science on this, just because of the way the alignment's not 100 percent. Okay, so and you'll see what I mean if you if you put this together yourself and and do this method, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. There's a little bit of an angle. Um, it's not 100 percent. It's not going to be, you know perfect the way you would like for it to be but it's going to get you pretty dang close um, and I think that's that's really the critical part is uh, figuring out what what that measurement is in your rifle am I good now yep. okay um, figuring out what that measurement is in your rifle um, the cartridge based to ogive and then moving forward with that and and the reason why the, the cartridge based to ogive measurement is important um, it's sort of the evolution of the reloader that's the way I look at it I try to break things down into just a simple concept so I can understand it um, you could get accurate rounds reloading from the cartridge base to the bullet tip you can do that I've done it I've been doing it for four years and I've shot really tiny groups with with a lot of different bullets okay but if you're going for consistency group to group shot to shot that's where the cartridge based to ogive measurement really becomes critical because the distance 
the distance to the tip will always vary. The bullet manufacturer, they're not going to produce consistently just almost perfect, not you know, nominal bullet based to bullet tip bullets. They're, they're not going to do that. They're not going to be able to do that with the, with the technology that they have and the, the manufacturing processes that they use. They won't be able to provide that consistency. But what is consistent, um, relatively consistent, is that measurement from the base to the ogive. The base of the bullet to the ogive is fairly consistent. You'll see some fluctuation, um, but not like what you would see from the bullet base to the tip. So it's sort of a it's sort of a next level, I'll call it, uh, in reloading. It's it's getting past the the cartridge base to bullet tip measurement, going with that measurement and calling it a day. Now it's taking it one step further. Um, which allows you to better dial in, you know, the rounds and your consistency will improve by doing that. So that's really it. Hopefully I, I, I provided some good info. If I didn't, oh well, it is what it is. So, uh, but I really appreciate you guys checking out the video. Um, hopefully some range footage to follow in a couple of days, maybe if I feel like getting out to the range. Uh, but other than that, hope you guys and gals have a good one. Talk to y'all later.